Hi everyone, this is Saucy the Traveling Towboat Chef. Thank you for uh, joining me in my premiere. This is my second one. Uh, the second one I did try to have was for the gumbo. I had major issues uh, with my phone and doing a lot of corruption and everything else. So hopefully this one doesn't have that problem. But the video was going to take a little longer than usual uh, for the process of fixing this meal. No, it is not a shepherd's pie. It is called a cottage pie. Only because it's made with ground beef. I did find that out at, after I already made the video. But it's, uh, it's it turned out pretty good. I had maybe this much left out of a big ass pan. But uh, I'm waiting for uh, more people to join us here. And hopefully by the time I'm done talking, we'll have enough people for you all to start talking and having a live chat along uh, with me if I have service. If you don't see me in the live chat, it's because I'm still on the river and we've got a lot of dead spots. So I will try and make it uh, to be able to join you in the chat. But uh, what was I going to say? I know blooper, blooper, blooper. Uh, so, yeah, speaking of bloopers, I'm definitely going to keep all my bloopers in. You all seem to enjoy them. It shows that I'm human. shows that I'm real. Uh, so. Now, the first part of the video, uh, we were going down the river, and I happened to see this outside the window of my galley. And it's, I kept looking and kept looking, and it had a sign on the side that said pizza. Uh, so. Well, it found out later it I'm going to explain that part uh, to you. Uh, it is not. It was directing people who has the pleasure boats to the back of the cove where they have restaurants and little shops of people that are on their boats that want to swing by and so forth. And one of the restaurants is a pizza. But where this um, old towboat up on the bank is, is also there in the middle of, um, how do I say, tearing it down for parts, spare things, um, turn it in for certain metals and so forth. It ended up being on the other side of that is like a junkyard for all these large boats. Uh, so in uh, barges that were abandoned and so forth. My phone popped up, said software update. So it interrupted uh, the end of that, that little part there. Anyways, uh, just continue watching. Uh, also at the end too, I have some pictures of some eagles. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see them. So, but uh, take a look at that. I mean, they're beautiful, or at least not for the ones I could see. So enjoy the videos and enjoy the live chat too. I'm not too sure about the story on this one, but it used to be it looks like it used to be a towboat and then they made it into a pizza place. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure of the story on that one. Wow, look at these others back here. Way back there. Yeah, there you go. Here, hold on. I'm going to... That one right there. I'm not sure what the hell that is. But there's tugboats there. It looks like a lot of marine service. But that one amazes me. Oh my god, wait. Here's more. Zoom in from the... I'm gonna try and zoom in from this side. Well, I'm gonna zoom in as far as I can. Now, as I said, but wait, there's more. Here's the more. I have got to find out the stories on this. We're right 
above Peora Lake. But it looks like a lot of these barges are grounded. Along with these old, old towboats. No blooper. Jeez. I'll find out the story. This is Saucy, the Traveling Towboat Chef. Today's uh, recipe is it comes from England. No, it's, uh, it is called Shepherd's Pie. So, let me show you the ingredients to start off with. Right there. Okay, this is the starting. I've got uh, about approximately four and a half pounds of ground chuck. I got frozen peas and frozen carrots. I'm sorry, frozen peas and frozen corn. God, blooper again. Here we go. Here's the carrots. Here's the onions and celery. Here's the three bay leaves that will go into it. Two uh, bouillon cubes. Uh, two teaspoons of thyme. Four, four tablespoons of um, Worcestershire. Four, tables, uh, four teaspoons of, um, no, I'm sorry, tablespoons of tomato paste, diced tomatoes drained, four cups of beef broth, and of course minced garlic. All this is going to go in the beef mixture. Oh, and of course there's flour that's going to be coming up uh, along with the olive oil. So, let's get this started and I'll take you step by step. Be right back. Okay, we're going to get started. I have a, it's like a mini Dutch oven. I'm going to put this all in. No, I'm not going to use it in the oven with this because it, it's going to make too much to be able to put the potatoes on. I'll show you when I get to it at the end. All right. But anyways, we're going to start off with this. I got this on medium high right now because my stove top is very hot. So, put in about three tablespoons of olive oil. Let that get heated up for a moment. Nice. Then um, put in onions. See, it didn't take long to heat that up, did it? You hear it sizzling? And the garlic. You know me. Now that I have that extra garlic, and everybody here loves it. So that's, that's probably about three or four tablespoons of garlic, but it only requires about two. Stir it together. As you can see, stir this together to where those onions get kind of translucent. Next, you want to put in what? Let me show you this first. That's about what it'll look like. Next, you want to put in your celery. And your carrots. All these are diced. And you cook them until they soften up or start softening up. Oh God, it smells good already. I love the smell of this stuff. But it, just keep stirring it around. Don't that look good enough to eat already? All right, be right back for the next step.
Okay, as you can see, they have softened up some. Not all the way, because they are going to be cooking with the, uh, the ground beef. The next step is to get the, turn this up back up on high. And then start adding the ground beef. Now, of course, this is ground chunk. Now, yeah, remember too, all this is going to shrink. So it may look like a lot when you start off with, but it will shrink as you cook it. Because it gets all that grease, which we will be draining some. So, being this is a shallow, small, shallow Dutch oven, it's the only one I've got. Remember. Turbo style, do with what you got. I have to add this gradually. Alright, when this is done, I'll be right back and show you that um, what the next step is. Okay, everyone. This is what it looks like. I've already drained uh, most of the juices out of it, but I've got to leave some of it to for the next step. Be right there and let you watch. The flour. Stir it in to coat and cook off the flour taste. This is like if you're doing uh, sausage gravy in the morning. How you would cut coat the sausage. Well, at least I, that's how I, how I make my gravy, which maybe I should do a video on. No, that's not how I make my sausage gravy in the morning. You gotta remember, I'm still waking up the, in the morning. But do about a half, about a half a cup for, for this amount. Maybe a little bit more. Stir it in. pan gets a little hot so definitely do this I burnt my thumb again the other day but you know like I said mustard works wonders on burns you can't tell that I got a burn on there again if I didn't have the mustard this thumb would probably be amputated by now <laughs> Want this to like be kind of thick style a little bit because you're going to make this into a gravy. Now just a little bit more flour. I'll show you the texture texture by the time I'm done. And just keep stirring it in. And see, you're cooking the flour taste out of it. You don't want to start adding the liquids right away either because it'll be lumpy. But as it cooks, oh god, it's giving that smell of a uh, good ground beef with veggies. All right. Now, next step will be right back for. Okay, the next step Add the frozen peas and corn. I did about a cup and a half. Stir that in. Like I said, this is going to be a big pot. What I may be doing, because not all not all the guys eat lunch, and this is for lunch, I may freeze some of this, and then the next time I make this, I'll make it for the guys that eat supper. And that will be probably next week. So, once I get this all made up, then you'll see how I freeze it. Half this. Alright? Then the next step is the time. 
and the time is 8.10 in the morning. The Worcestershire may have to add a little bit more than that. The tomato paste. The diced tomatoes. Getting full here. And of course, the broth. Let's hope I got enough room in this pot. If not, I may have to switch to a deep dish pot. Oh, dude, I got all the flavors in the bottom of this one, though. Okay, here we go. Perfect, but it's going to be kind of full. So, stir it in good. By the way, I switch it back down to medium heat. I'm going to get my wood... My, Oops, I forgot to add in the bay leaves, too. Bay leaf there, bay leaf there. Stir it in good so I can get the crunchies off the bottom. That's the best part. That's where all the flavor's at. As you can see, it's turning into a gravy mixture. Being that my uh, stove runs very hot, I'm turning this down to low not medium hot, medium heat. All I have on my temperature settings is low, medium, and high. And trust me, the, this stove top runs high. It's supposed to cook it for another 20 minutes and stir in occasionally. Now I got it all mixed together. As you can see, don't that look good? Nice. Let that cook for that. And my next step is I'm going to be preparing the potatoes. I'm uh, going to be peeling about 10, uh, 10 to 12 potatoes, depending on the size. So these are just Idaho potatoes. I'm going to dice them up, of course. Then i got to boil them so I can make it into um, the mashed potatoes. And, of course, we all know how to make mashed potatoes. But I use uh, sour cream. Uh, milk, butter, salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. That's how I do it. Uh, so I'll show you the results of mashed potatoes. But that's what's going to make the crust for the top of the shepherd's pie. Oh my gosh. Wait a second. I got to do something. Where's my spoon? Dang it. Where's my spoon? get one of these. I gotta test this. See if it tastes any good. Oh god yeah. It can use some salt and pepper even though it's not in the recipe. So I just may add a little bit of that. But I'm gonna use seasoned salt. Again, I don't want to do too much. Yeah, Peppa. Where's my other woods? My other spoon. There it is. Well, I'll come back to you in about a few seconds. I'll have the mashed potatoes ready. And I'll show you how we're going to plate it up to go into the oven. All right? See you in a few. Okay, I've inside. There is sour cream. There's some butter. Uh, well, there was. It's melted in. Nice uh, so over here. And over here. More sour cream and butter over here. Nice. Uh, so I also got some half and half I put in. Let me mix this up. Oh, and I've got pepper, garlic powder and onion powder okay and uh, i haven't added the salt yet and i'll tell you the reason why when i come back as you can see i've already got the potatoes pretty much mashed 
Now I add the salt, and I'm doing seasoned salt, so you can see how much I'm putting in. And that's about all you need. Uh, the reason why I don't add salt during mixing, it will glutenize the potatoes. So don't, I don't even put salt in the water. If you don't believe me, look it up. Google does wonders. All right, be right back. As you can see, I already got the mixture in. Look how thick it is so you can understand. Now you want to make it uh, like an even layer. Because remember, this is a shepherd's pie. This is not mixing all together. Alright, I got the potatoes right here. And let's make the crust. Start off with this much here. This much here. Oops. Let's see if I'm going to need any more than that. So, you want to spread it. Don't press down into it. Just spread it. Get it all the way to the sides. Show you what I do with it afterwards, and it's to make it uh, have a crusty top. That's nothing better than mashed potato, crusty mash, mashed potatoes. It is so good. I make it. I'll show you how uh, far I get it to on the side. The reason why I don't get it all the way because it will boil over if you do, do too much. And that gravy is a mess. All right, need a little bit more potatoes. My water's running over there. Hold on. Blooper, I should have had that turned off. All right, we're almost done here. A little bit more potatoes. A little bit more over here in this one corner. I give it time to breathe and be able to heat all around it. Alright, let me show you what I'm talking about when getting it to the sides. I'm not sure if you can see all around. I'm hoping so. I believe that's the side of the camera. Yep. How it is all the way around. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, a deckhand wanted to come in and get a snack, so I had to pause the, uh, the video. But, anyways, to continue, take the back of your spoon. Let me set this down so you can see what I'm doing. And do this make some little peaks. If that don't work, which it ain't, hold up, I'll show you the be better secret. Be right back. You get your fork. And just do this. That will cause little crusty peaks. And then when you're done, you put on some paprika on the top. You put it in the oven for approximately 25 to 30 minutes at 350, and it'll be done. Uh, if You should be able to tell because it'll be really bubbling on the sides. Make sure you don't go over 350 because the gravy, it may burn no, it's on the bottom. You don't want that tasting with the rest of the stuff. I always check it and as we go along. Whenever it says something like 25, 30 minutes, I check it like at 20 minutes. So, anyways, get that. 
If you look closely, you can see all those peaks. Now the paprika. And into the oven it goes. I'll be back in uh, 25 to 30 minutes. Show you what it looks like coming out of the oven. So be right back. It should be done. Let's take a look at it, okay? Oh, forgot to turn my hat around. Oh, that's all right. This is the way I normally wear it when I work. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see this. Yummy. It's yummy. Whoops. Hold on, I gotta put this in or I'm gonna burn my legs up. Whoops, did I press the button to move the camera? Okay. Don't that look good? Look at that crust. Trust me, it's a crust. See the little brown tips? And how it's all on the outside with the gravy? boys are going to like this. I may even have lunch. I don't usually eat this much, but this looks good. I'll let you all know how it was. And I want to thank you all for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, share the video, and don't forget to click on that little bell. So, and uh, that way you get notifications of when I get more videos out. I, again, thank you, and you all have a beautiful and wonderful day. Not like a mess what we got outside. Let me turn this around real quick. We got a big storm coming. Not sure if you can see it. But look at those clouds up there. It's, it's going to be a doozy. Again, have a great day. There's two eagles on the bank. One walked down to the water. They're looking for fish. Aren't they beautiful? Not sure if you can hear them, but they're talking to each other. Little chirps. I think he's the male that's in the back. Gorgeous. That's a close up. As far as I can zoom in, I'm hoping it's in focus because the light's kind of bright out here. Amazing. Nature is beautiful.